Hey there, everybody. It's your boy Chopadong, and I wanted to go through uh, yesterday's graphic one more time, show you guys kind of how to simplify your approach if you're struggling with uh, DFS MLB and how to target the obvious. And then we'll worry about adding any nuance or anything like that later. Um, this is what I do typically first. Sometimes this is all I get to that day. Other days I expand on my thoughts or I read the cheat sheets or I dig into the DS or the research station a little bit. But this is what I pretty much do every single day. Uh, and it works as good as anything. So I figured it's time to share it, show you guys a little bit of how uh, to target bad pitching and good offenses. And it really just comes down to MLB.com team stats. You can target the hitting and you can look for who's just literally scoring runs. You can sort it down to say the last two weeks if you want to and get a little sense of maybe who's hot and who's not. Minnesota, Oakland, Philly, Texas, New York, they've been scoring a lot of runs lately. Sometimes they come off of, you know, good series against bad teams, and then they run into a good team, and so this number will fluctuate. Uh, but if you follow it as just a generic trend, it does okay throughout the season. You can use the whole season numbers if you want to. You can carve it down to whatever sample size you like. It's just the shorter the sample size, the more volatility you're going to get. Um, something that is... I, two weeks I like just because two weeks to me, same thing I use in the trending tab in the research station, uh, two weeks to me is long enough that a guy has kind of sustained his hot, but short enough that these rankings will change every few days, if that makes sense. So that's kind of where I like to go. And I track the runs scored. I track the home runs because that's the big outlier in baseball, right? That's the Getting home runs is what matters. So New York, there's an obvious direct correlation between hitting home runs as a team and scoring a lot of runs as a team. But the teams that are doing both are usually the teams you want to target in fantasy. Yankees, Athletics, Dodgers, Orioles, Astros, all of a sudden. Astros have been really bad to start the year. Here they are, last two weeks. If I look at their season-long numbers, Houston, well, they're up to number seven. They were pretty low there for a while. But... In the last seven days, top five, last 15 days, top five, you know, maybe they're ascending and they're coming on. And you can get them right now to suppress price point because they've been so bad for, you know, the beginning of the season that their prices haven't come up like Cincinnati or some of these other teams that were hot to start the year and got expensive or the Dodgers and the Braves who are just going to always be expensive. Those are the two numbers I track, runs scored, home runs. If you want to track OPS, you certainly can. Uh, you're going to find a correlation there. But, you know, hitting doubles, hitting triples, and that is great. But home runs is where you make your money in MLB DFS. I also want to know pitching. What are the, who are the bad teams? Who carries the high ERAs, right? But the way I look at it, again, down to two weeks, who's just giving up runs? These are the numbers I want to know. Miami Marlins giving up 92 runs in two weeks. That is 15 runs more than the next best team or next worst team, Oakland, the LA Angels, San Francisco Giants have been giving up a lot of runs. Cardinals have been giving up a lot of runs. The Brewers, you know, these these are teams. So what 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 does this tell you? The Cardinals and the Brewers series should be higher scoring, right? Any re any reason why the Sharp app requested hitting the over yesterday in this game? Duh. These things all go hand in hand. You don't have to dive super super deep to find these things to get a, a holistic view or a a big picture idea of what could happen. Looking over here at home runs allowed, same diff, Miami, Houston. So target Houston, it's okay. Cincinnati, Brewers, Pirates, you know, LA Angels. What I like to do myself is look at teams that are hitting home runs and teams that are giving up home runs. And do they ever match up or face each other? Well, we can look at today's schedule. I, I, I took these, ten, these teams and I put them on a little chart here. Okay, so you look in the lower left portion of the of the scoreboard here, or of the, the sheet, the green is a duplicate. So if I'm looking at a team in the runs scored list and then a home run, oh, this is the pitching side of it. So this is runs allowed and this is home runs allowed. Miami is on both lists. Milwaukee is on both lists. Oakland is on both lists, right? Arizona is on both lists. The White Sox are on both lists. Toronto is on both lists. This is a, these are good teams. These green teams are good teams to target on a slate. Over here, teams scoring runs and hitting home runs. The green teams, again, 
are on both lists. So New York Yankees, Oakland, LA, these are good teams to target right now. If we've got any luck going for us, these teams are going to face off against each other. So what do I do? I go into the Domination Station Optimizer. It's got everything that I need. I load up a slate. I want to do the early only today, let's say. And I'm going to look at these teams. Which of these teams are on this list? Let's start by looking at the teams giving up runs. Miami, Milwaukee, Oakland, or any of them on this list? Let's see, there's Miami, so that puts Philly in a good spot. Is Philly on the other list? Philly is on both lists, so there's a great matchup. Unless it's their ace throwing, it's a great matchup. Target Philly today, right? They're probably going to be chalky, but not everybody's doing this. And when not everybody is doing this, there's still room for you to be all right. Uh, who else did we say? Miami, Milwaukee, Oakland. Is either Oakland or Milwaukee on this list? Looks like no. So Philly is definitely the prime matchup right now. Arizona, Chicago, Toronto. Arizona is on this list. And Chicago and Toronto are not. So let's look at Baltimore. Is Baltimore on the other list? There they are, hitting home runs. Maybe not scoring a ton of runs as a team the last two weeks, but they're still hitting home runs. So Philly, Baltimore, if you want to stack Philly and Baltimore, go for it. Do we have ownerships for this slate? Oh, we do. Let's sort by ownership and let's see who we got running there at the top in the hitters list, not pitchers. Who's in the hitters list? Well, there's a lot of Baltimore. Baltimore's going to be chalky. But look, Philly is way down the list. So if I wanted to go into, you know, FanDuel and pop open some kind of a single entry or a three max or a multiply, multiplier type of, you know, league, three man, five man, ten man, hundred man, whatever. I can come here to the early only slate. Got quarters involved if I want, but I can come down here to something, you know, 500 probably is, is decent. Small squeeze is probably decent. If I wanted to look at the, you know, 100 man league, these uh, might, got three and a half hours left. That'll probably fill. So let's give it a shot. First thing that we could do is we could look for pitchers, but we could also just load up Philly bats. And if I want to load up Philly bats, since they're going to be lower owned and make them my bigger four stack, who am I looking for? Well, how's Bryce been doing lately? Pretty strong, right? Maybe we start there. Trey Turner on the IL, Schwarber maybe not. Bohm, Bohm was hot there for a while. You know, but he's cooled off a little bit. Maybe we'll save him for later. Uh, Brandon Marsh, a little lower in the order. Meh, doing okay. Remuto, a little better, so bing. So what am I sitting on a 3-5 stack right now? Stott leading off. That could be interesting. Is he playing? Yeah, he's playing well. Bing, he goes in. And then I can look down lower in the lineup where I can look at Edmundo Sosa. is going to be dirt cheap. And he's playing all right. So there we go. So I've got my four stack. It's a what? It's a one, two, three, five. That's a great stack. Now I come off down into, say, Baltimore and look here at some of these guys, right? Where Gunnar Henderson. It's going to be expensive. The guy produces generally is pretty consistent. Uh, Westerberg could be a shortstop. We're going to go in the bottom of the order. He's producing okay. Malcastle, don't know if we can do that. If we've got our utility spot chewed up, which we do, can't probably use him unless we shuffle some stuff around. Can't use Rutschman probably. Um, Santander, it's been okay. He's fairly cheap, right? O'Hearn, first base and outfield eligible. Again, it's been okay-ish. Five, three, hitting in the three hole. Not bad. You know, we'll save Gunnarsson maybe for a little bit later. Because now maybe we want to look at our pitcher. What do we have left? 5,500, 16,000 for, what, three players? So if I want to look at my pitcher, I just come over in here into the domination station again. And let's see who that chalk pitcher is on the, on the slate. Max Fried, 9,100. It's projected over 30 points. He's favored to win the game. I mean, there's really no reason to go anywhere else. I don't need to get cute there because Philly's already so low owned as a team. I don't need to get cute. Uh, do I like anybody better? Uh, Justin Steele looks the same. He's not projected for as much value as uh, Freed. Down here a little bit cheaper. Lazardo against Philly is obviously out. Interesting, he's carrying some ownership against Philly. Uh, Taewon Walker. If you believe in Philly, you might go this route, 8400 if you need the money. But let's just throw Freed in there. 
No reason, like I said, no reason to overreact or get too cute. And now we've got 3,800 for our shortstop, who we already know we would want to be Gunnar Henderson most likely. 3,400 for an outfield one-off. So, who do we like? Do we like Chisholm leading off in Miami? I don't know. How's he been doing? He's not bad, right? Jesse Winker, Giancarlo Stanton, can't argue. You might wear the golden sombrero, but you might end up pop for a big game of double dong. Uh, Suzuki, if you like uh, Chicago, it's not the worst, right? He's been playing fairly well lately. De La Cruz in Pittsburgh. Miami's given up runs, and he's ooh, he's been consistent. So maybe we just do that. Maybe call it a lineup. Done. You've basically you got yourself a 1-3-5 Baltimore stack. You've got yourself a 1-2-3-5 Philly stack that's lower owned. You've got the chalk pitcher, and you've got a decent one off him, De La Cruz. You can come up with a jillion ways to build a jillion different lineups. You know, if you wanted to, you can come up here, and you could say, build me 15 lineups, please. Let's give me a, you know, a few unique players. Let's make them 4 by 2s and let's use the teams that we wanted to use. We know New York's been okay, but we know that we primarily want Philly and Baltimore. You know, mirror that stack. Maybe add in, you know, Chicago, Atlanta, Arizona, whatever. Or maybe we just keep it the same and say these are just these are the teams that we want to use. Make me 15 lineups using those, please. Once it churns them out, we go pick them from here. One, Philly, Yankees. Maybe you like that better. I don't like my one-off being an eight-hole hitter. Uh, that's an interesting uh, pitcher. Maybe it worked. Maybe he, go double-check the cheat sheets. Maybe he's on a cheat sheet as a core player, a really high upside play, and you want to use him. Go for it, right? Uh, Philly and New York again with two from Miami, which is interesting. Uh, two from Baltimore. Keep, cuts your exposure down to Baltimore. I think that Philly's in a little bit better spot based on what we saw. But if you were going hardcore Yankees and wanted to supplement with Philly or Baltimore or my, whatever, it, it, these work too. I don't want you thinking that there's some one-size-fits-all, cut-and-dry approach. There just isn't. You do your thing. You do your way. You do something that makes sense for you and do it over and over and over and over again. If you like this idea and it's really simple, it takes you, what, 10 minutes to put together a lineup and go back out and cut the grass. Or if you like this idea, back test it. That's what the tool is for. Go back here and back test it. Run off, you know, five lineups per slate. Target two or three teams that you thought were in a good spot and see how well that 4x2 or that 4x3 does with the chalk pitcher. Then add a couple of uniques or add some whatever and start picking up patterns. Go back and test every game so far this year. If you don't test every game so far this year, then your sample size isn't near big enough to know if this works or not. Many of us, my, myself, Scott, probably Razzle, other people when we backtest, have backtested back months, even multiple seasons at times, on a piece of paper. I mean, you always see me carrying my little, my little notebook, right? My little notepad. I have so many freaking notes in here from things that I've done in the past and testing and stuff that I've done that that's how I know what I do works. You just need to do what you do and develop something that you like doing, and that's what you're here for is to ask us questions, watch our methods, blend a couple of them together if you like, test it, and if it works, make it yours. Okay, so really and truly, we're not dealing with a lot of rocket science here. We're in a hyper simple approach, which is what the Beginner's Forum is for, and hopefully you see a little bit of how to use these tools and create these lineups for yourself, and hopefully you get out there and you start winning along with us, because after all, those army helmets are all over leaderboards almost all the time, and we'd love to have you up at the top with us. Take care, everybody. And uh, have a good Saturday. We'll talk to you soon.